friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, September 6th. And it is going to be an absolutely beautiful day here in southeastern Pennsylvania. We're not yet getting those nice cool fall temperatures, but we're in the 60s now. We're going to get into the low 80s and uh, not bad. Not a bad day for getting some work done outside in the in the morning. So, Sorry, should have felt that. I am smoking some Carter Hall this morning, and I've got it in this um, no-name, uh, what is clearly a custom-built knockoff sort of pipe. I uh, got this from Danny Shore. And Carter Hall's good. So there has been a... Um, sort of a phenomenon sweeping through the, the YouTube pipe community. <clears throat> Started off with full dottle, uh, really got sort of, the, the bar got raised by Kilted Piper Steve, uh, Cliff Higgins got involved, and ultimately I, I believe it was uh, Yardism made the statement that we now have Squirrel Week in the YTPC. Uh, or Squirrel Week is better than Shark Week, something like that. If you haven't seen these guys' videos about squirrels, uh, about crazy demon squirrels, as, as Steve put it, go go look them up. Uh, I'll try to I'll try to put links down down below. Um, just some really enjoyable stories. So I thought, well, this is this is really funny first off and kind of cool and I got a, a squirrel I got a couple of squirrel stories actually uh, but my two favorite uh, one involves a dead squirrel and I've told it before so I'm not gonna not gonna tell that story again uh, the other story involves a very much alive squirrel and while it is not the sort of vicious near-death experience that <laughs> some of these other guys have had with with these little tiny squirrels uh, it is it, it's I think it's a funny story so I'll, I'll try to tell this uh, so I was a student at the University of Pittsburgh a graduate student and the building that I worked in had a library in it and this was just a small biology library, uh, biology, psychology. Uh, so it wasn't the main library that the university would have, but just a small um, specialized library. And you would walk down the hallway to this building and then you would make a turn and you there would be the library and this large sort of, um, what would you call it, lobby area. Uh, just an open space with glass doors. And then you could walk out the glass doors and there was this little courtyard sort of you know, walkway that wound a little bit towards the street, and there were some, uh, if I remember right, concrete benches along the walkway. And just inside, in that lobby area, there was a uh, coffee uh, snack shop. It wasn't really a shop, it was actually like a little stand that was set up. And you get coffee, you could get, uh, you know, like bagels, Danish, that sort of thing. And they had some snacks, you know. So in the afternoon, uh, I would often, and by often, I mean once or twice a week, go out in, you know, after lunch, uh, you know, so it was maybe three o'clock or so, I'd, I'd get tired and need a sort of boost, so I'd go down and I'd get some coffee, and usually I'd get some sort of a snack, um, like, you know, Cheetos or something like that. These little bags of, of snacks, and I would go and I would sit on the one of these park benches, and nobody ever sat on these things. I don't know why. Um, the, it wasn't hot at the time. It was probably fall, uh, early fall, maybe around this time actually, this time of year. But I, I guess because it was along the walkway, just you know, you weren't 
you weren't looking for a place to sit as you were walking down that walkway. You were either coming or going from the building. Um, but having, you know, since I was working in there, I, you know, sit out there and you know, you'd see people passing. That was just a pleasant way to spend a, uh, I was going to say a couple of hours, it was a couple of hours, was, you know, 15 minutes or so for a, for a break. And so I was sitting there one day and there were squirrels in the grass and there were trees around and squirrels shooting up and down the trees. And I noticed this squirrel on the other side of the walkway kind of skittering a little bit towards me. And as I looked at him, he'd skitter back. And we sort of played this game from it. And I started whatever I had, uh, you know, I'd throw a little something towards him. And he'd very cautiously move forward. And he'd grab the thing and he'd run away. And then he'd come back. And I, I you know, sort of over time and then this you know this took days he he got I assume it was the same squirrel uh, he got more and more friendly um, and it got to the point where he was taking a something from my hand you know I could just bend over and hold it down to him and he would come right up to me and take it and then run away so this continued on for a while I wasn't really thinking about it. It was just, you know, kind of something to do while I was drinking some coffee and recharging. So one day I, I go out there and I get uh, get my snack and my coffee and I sit on the bench and I open up the bag and all of a sudden I see this, this blur and the darn thing lands in my lap and there's the squirrel. And it's looking up at me, and I can feel its its claws going right through my jeans, and not into my leg, but they were there. You know, it was very obvious that this this thing sitting in my lap had claws, and they were out. And he was using them to probably to hold on. I don't know if it was so much that he was scared, but he looked a little scared, and I was a little scared. <laughs> yeah, this was this was a surprise for both of us. And I, whatever I had, I held it out and he took it and he took off and that was it and the next time I went out there I sat down and you know very carefully picked up and zoom overcame the squirrel right in my lap and I gave him a little treat so I trained a squirrel to jump in my lap I didn't mean to do it but he figured out that he could do it I guess he trusted me at this point so every day I would go out there Every day that I would go out there, not not that I went every day, um, I would sit down and within a few minutes I would have a squirrel in my lap and I would give it a treat and it would run away and it wasn't a big deal. It just I just I got used to it. The squirrel got used to it. We were buddies. <laughs> um, this went on for quite a while. And looking back on it, it, it it's funny because it never really occurred to me that this was at all unique or unusual until uh, this this day is, is etched in my memory. I, I can see this happening like I'm watching a movie. So we had, you know, not everything at the university was in the same building. I'd have to go and go to other buildings for classes or seminars or things like that. And I went off for an afternoon uh, seminar one day. And I was coming back from it probably around 3, 4 o'clock, something like that. And I was approaching the building on this, this path. The path that has the, the benches on it. And as I'm just starting up the path, I see a woman come out of the, the, the lobby library area. Um, I don't think she was a student. She, she looked like she might have been like one of the administrators, um, administrative assistants or something like that, well-dressed. Um, I don't want to say older, but certainly a bit older than the students would, would have probably been. And she comes walking towards me, and then we're, we're still quite a distance apart at this point. And then to my immediate horror, she goes 
and walks towards the bench, the same bench that I've been sitting on, and I suddenly realize what's going to happen. And she sits, and within like 10 seconds, <laughs> she's got a squirrel in her lap. I guess the squirrel had figured out that it's okay to sit in anybody's lap who sits on that bench. It just came flying. And this woman's reaction was one of the funniest things I think I've ever seen. Oh, you would have thought she was being chased by a swarm of bees. <laughs> the poor squirrel. <laughs> she screamed. The squirrel jumped. <laughs> So, the, I mean, that was funny. That was, that was a really funny moment. But that's not the end of the story because I felt bad about it, but I certainly didn't, you know, tell her anything about it. I didn't. <laughs> but I didn't want to admit to being the person that caused it. But I did notice that if I was to go out the other end of the building around 3 o'clock and sort of take a walk, <laughs> I would often catch someone <laughs> sitting on the bench. And I tell you, it only happened maybe, I don't know, maybe three or four times after that, that one poor woman. But it was always just absolutely hilarious. and. You know, from my point of view, I knew that it was safe. You know, this squirrel had never shown any signs of aggression to me. And I'm sure that he had no intention of hurting anyone. Or <laughs> he just wanted his treat. And, oh, God, I'll never forget that woman's reaction. The, the screams. <laughs> the flailing. <laughs> ah, poor woman. I hope she's okay. So that's my squirrel story. Not as exciting as uh, some of the other ones, but I, I hope you at least could see some of the humor in it. Had a great Friday night uh, live stream last uh, this this past Friday uh, with Everett Young. Uh, really great chat we had. If you want to watch the replay of that, it's available, and I'll link below to that for you. And this coming Friday, we have Larry Blackett, uh, Buttons for Your Bridges, the, uh, the famous uh, pewter temper maker uh, and, and pewter smith. And I'm uh, really looking forward to, to interviewing Larry and finding out a bit about pewter smithery. And I guess we got to do a, um, a Saturday afternoon live stream. Usually do those in the middle of the month. And, uh, yeah, maybe we'll, we'll do that in two weeks' time. And for any folks that are enjoying the... Uh, irregular lunchtime live streams. I've almost got the glitches worked out of the software. Everything worked beautifully last Wednesday. And I think everything is good, but the problem is I don't know why it worked. So I want to try one more test. Uh, I'm not sure I'm going to do that this Wednesday, but if things go well, I'll do another uh, lunchtime live stream. So that's 12 p.m. Eastern. Uh, watch for the notification. I'll put it up. I'll try to put it up as early Wednesday morning as I can. Anyway, folks, hope you enjoyed my squirrel story. Be sure to check out uh, Dallas and Steve and, and uh, Cliff's squirrel stories that I'll link down below. And enjoy your Sunday, enjoy your Labor Day holiday if you have such a thing, and have a great week ahead. Until we speak again, I'll look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now.